This is my bushfire resistant tiny house. It's also passive and off grid and in a farm park style. I wanted to build something which was different and unique. I've used my own style on the outside to make it fun and interactive. It's also surprisingly light. I thought it's not sustainable to build a house twice, so it's got to be fire resistant. Bushfire is a natural part of Victorian lifestyle and the methods we've used to create bushfire proof houses have been around now for about 40 years. So I think it's about time that I tried putting one in a tiny house. I'd like to see tiny houses legislated in Victoria, but I don't think that's going to happen until we address bushfire resistance. I didn't want to make a fireproof bunker. It's not intended for anyone to stay here during an emergency, but it's easy enough to lock up and then you can leave and know that you're going to come home to something. So currently none of our tiny houses have any bushfire resistance and unfortunately they're being parked in really dangerous positions. To make this house fire resistant, the first thing I had to do was move it away from the eucalypts. I also had to make sure the vegetation from the outside was cleared. We're on a gravel surface and I've trimmed down all the grass. We're 15 to 25 metres away from the eucalyptus trees, which is about as close as I could comfortably get with this house. I've got the southern wall facing the predominant threat. The southern wall has no windows, a blank wall, that's its strongest resilience to radiant heat. The shape of the house was inspired by bushfire resistance as well. There's no veranda, there's very few overhanging parts. The windows are all very smooth. There's also no roof space in this house, which is really common for a tiny house. But that's a great place to trap embers. I've installed skirting on the underside of the house. That's to prevent embers from landing underneath. I've also steel clad the underside of the trailer and filled up all the gaps. So all trailers have a problem, uh, that is that they have tires underneath them. Tires burn during a fire. So I've removed them once we installed the trailer. I took the tires out and used them as bench seat. I've placed the battery pack from the emergency brake system inside the house and wired it back outside. The trailer lights are made of plastic, so I've covered them up to prevent ignition. I've also filled in behind them with fireproof sealant. That's to stop ignition from making it through to the house. Preventing the radiant heat from entering the house is a big problem, and it doesn't have any masonry on the outside. So I've used blow-in insulation to raise the insulation value. I've also used argon filled windows and double glazing to keep the heat outside. But every window has a shutter made of steel uh, that can be installed by a single person. I wanted them to be quick, easy and light so existing shutters weren't an option. They can be installed by in under a minute by one person and you don't need any tools or equipment. With the shutter on the front door still opens as usual from the inside and out. If you were to be trapped inside this house during an emergency I wanted to make sure the visibility was never lost, so the bedroom shutter opens from the inside. Windows are always going to be a weak point, so I've reduced the number and the size. The glass is toughened, double glazed and argon filled. The window seals are made of steel or fireproof timber, which is in this case silver top ash. The timber is incredibly dense and is very difficult to ignite. I've also used Jarrah and eye mark on the outside of the house. Many houses that don't survive bushfire succumb to ember attack. Burning embers get lodged in between gaps or they land on the house or they even force their way inside. So a lot of effort has been made on this house to seal all the gaps up. All the vents are covered in fireproof mesh up to three different grades inside and out. Uh, I'll call it test of success for now until we open this up and, uh, and have a look underneath. There's our cup of water, still intact, and would you believe it, it's still properly cold. All the doors and windows are very tight fitting and have fireproof protective strips along the bottom. All the materials on the outer skin of the house need to be fire resistant. We've got steel downpipes, steel plumbing, we've got tin cladding and fire resistant paint on the timber cladding. We've also used fire resistant sealants, gap fillers, paint. I've included gutter guard to stop the gutters from filling up with leaf litter. I've installed a permanent ladder so there's no excuse not to keep the gutters clean. The steel deck allows flames to burn through without being deflected towards the house. The gap between the deck and the house also prevents leaf litter build up. I've reduced the amount of plastic on the inside as much as possible to prevent fumes from building up during an emergency. In modern houses the gas bottles are fitted away from the house. The problem with the tiny house is that the gas bottle is attached to the house. To solve this problem, I've put it in its own fireproof box. The fireproof cabinet is sealed separately to the house and has its own externally opening door. The door is fire resistant, it's built from Jarrah and compressed sheet. 
It's got a double fold door stop on it to prevent radiant heat from entering the cabinet. All the corners of the cladding are clad in steel, either three millimeter steel or colorbond flashing. That's to prevent the summer sun from entering through the windows. I've also reduced the size and the shape of the windows. The insulation of the argon filled windows and the blow-in insulation also makes it a really comfortable place to live. To reduce the amount of heat within the house, I've installed an automatically operating vent. The vent turns on at 25 degrees and extracts hot air from the house and draws in cold air from underneath it. I came from a background building playgrounds, so I was acutely aware of the safety of houses. And I was very worried that tiny houses were being built without even the basic hand grips required for stairs. I've installed vertical handrails next to the stairs. I've reduced the amount of stairs required in this house and installed appropriate hand grips as well. I've also put in some more subtle features to prevent people from rolling out of bed. I've also included hand grips for the external stairs. The outside ladder starts one meter off the ground to prevent toddlers from climbing up it. I've also included some fire safety methods. Smoke alarms, fire blankets and extinguishers are all here. I've included some extra comfort features as well. I've included an indoor hammock for the wet days and also a projector. It's a self-contained house. It's got its own water supply and solar system. It's also got a composting toilet and a stovetop hot water system. I wanted to make it a really versatile living space. So it's wide and open and I've got some versatile furniture that makes living here really easy. I hope this can lead to a more sustainable future for houses and communities. I wanted the tiny house to be fun and interesting, something you can really enjoy coming home to. I also want it to be an off-grid living experience, something you could try out and see for yourself what off-grid living is all about. Welcome to the Bushfire Resistance.